Yeah, we're live. So, all right, cool. Uh, hello, guys uh, and girls. Um, Hamish from mortgagesonline.co.nz. Uh, thanks for joining us today. I've got um, a couple of seasoned investors, and we're just going to, you know, have a think about um, 2018, really. So, I, um, I've got with me Gary, who's a passionate Auckland property investor, sales trainer, and renovation expert. He's um, got a got a portfolio, you know. He's got a few properties. He's he's built up to fourteen in less than ten years, um, and right now he's also started his own renovation business, Grand Luso um, Renovations. And um, yeah, um, welcome, Gary. Thanks. And I've got Lisa Taylor as well with me. Um, Lisa Taylor. Uh, Lisa started uh, at the age of twenty nine. With her first invest property, now she's got um, more than a few houses <laughs> and um, a very good passive income. But she's also a property manager as well, looking after rental properties for others. Um, so yeah, I'm really fortunate to have them uh, with us. So I, um, I guess we'll probably start out with. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things changing mm. in 2018. A lot of things coming up. Yeah. Um, the healthy homes bill. You know, the, the lending's getting a bit tighter as well, and then we've got things like, uh, in the background, the um, the new government with um, other rules, like a uh, little bit of tightening on overseas investors, um, and uh, yeah, the build program, which which would get underway over the next few years, I guess. Mm. But yeah, let's, um, thoughts, your thoughts on the Healthy Homes Bill, Lisa? Lisa, because you... Uh, well, yes, I've commented on that in December in, the, um, in, a, in a magazine that, that I was interviewed. Um, I guess the big topic there would be around the heat pumps, actually. I think they're looking at making that mandatory, which um, is all, all, all great. And obviously we've already touched on um, the insulation, which is helping have healthy, warm homes. But um, in my experience, I'm finding that a lot of tenants aren't wanting to use the power to run the heat pumps. So. It's all good to put in these legislations and yeah. um, ask us to do things, but um, having it, you know, followed through and having people go along with it is, is another story. Mm. Yeah, it'll be interesting because I think by 2019 they'll they they're going to really put the details into that bill so we know what's mm. uh, what's really going to happen. Um, yeah, I mean, um, what else are we seeing? Are you seeing out there with the? Um, with investors, any big concerns for the next year? Do you think? Uh, well, I think they're just worried about their cash flow. They're, they're worried about um, immigration and what what's happening with um, their rent levels, and obviously being able to, you know, like I said, the cash flow and being able to cover cover yeah. the, the rising expenses that that are being imposed with, you know, with having to put in all these. Um, with the, the legislation around the smoke alarm, that's all extra expense, and the um, insulation that they're all having to fork out for, and then not knowing about what other expenses may be coming up. Um, yeah, yeah so ca cash flow becomes quite important cash flow is uh, really going important. forward. Absolutely. And Gary, you you've had a bit of experience with renovating and um, and renting out, right? Yeah. And you have as well, Lisa. I think. Mm -hmm. so. Yes. How, how do you think? And you you're doing <laughs> renovations now. How are you finding? How are you finding that? Oh, renovations, I think there's uh, always a, well, from a business point of view, I think it's a good business to get into. Um, and for me, it's that, um, you know, 2018 for me, it's just getting building my cash flow in my businesses. And, um, and obviously, the more cash flow, then I can buy more properties. Mm. You know, I think, I think for um, a lot of investors out there, a lot of the concern is not, not just the cash flow, but also obviously, um, you know, property prices. You know, yeah. I think the biggest question is, you know, where is the heading? Mm. And kind of my advice is that as long as you focus more on the long term, you know, you're buying the main cities, um, areas where it's a, a decent population growth, popular, po uh, positive population growth, yep. then it's mm. all fine, you know. I mean, I came to New, um, Auckland 96, 21 years ago, um, what, almost 22 two now. And back, back in the day, it was like 900,000 people in Auckland. Now it's one point six million, right? So supply and demand is very, mm. very easy to predict. It, uh, predict it. Mm. So my advice is for people um, who um, 
are in a position to buy, I think um, in Auckland anyway, it's a good time to buy because um, while everybody is kind of thinking whether, whether they should buy or not, then obviously, um, like Warren Buffett says, right? You know, when, when people are, are in fear, then you, you want to take, opportun- uh, take advantage of the mm. opportunity. Mm. Mm. Yeah. There's a lot of investors that are looking at potentially moving out of, out of the industry at the moment because they are in fear. So it creates an opportunity for other people yeah, yeah. to go in there. Yeah. And baby boomers retiring yeah. as well, cashing mm-hmm. up, mm-hmm. right, moving and to Papamoa. <laughs> and a lot of confusion as well, like around the like the unitary plan, there's a lot of opportunities, uh, a lot of prices, a lot of properties that are being priced at um, yep. uh, maybe not at the right level for being very subdividable. Yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah, a client of mine, um, yeah, I've just done the renovation for him and uh, he bought a, a full section in Mount Roscoe, um, six, 670 square meters full site and um, just for just slightly over uh, 1 million yep. and he's going to spend about 800k developing it but he's going to able to, you know, in two, three years time, he's going to turn one income into five incomes. Mm. So, um, you know, 1.8 million total um, input that probably is going to value, um, you know, based on cap rate of four and a half percent or four percent, it's going to value to about three point two million. Mm. So equity gain is like, you know, amazing, and also the yield as well, five income from one income to five incomes, that's going to return about um, seven point five percent return, and mm. that's in central Auckland. Yeah, and I think that's interesting. We were talking earlier about minor dwellings, right? That that strategy is kind of. Um, you got to be careful with that, right? Especially if you can put a whole extra dwelling um, multiple instead of just dwellings. a minor, more multiple dwellings. Yeah. Uh, you might be wasting yeah. wasting space with a minor dwelling. Um, yeah. Mm. yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah. So instead of minor dwelling, it should be multiple dwellings with a big S at the end. Mm. I think that's the biggest opportunity with yep. a unity plan going forward. Um, but obviously, the, the there's a lot of traps as well because not not all the sites can be developed. Because of, uh, I think the biggest constraint will be this, the storm water and yep. the wastewater. Because in certain parts of Auckland, like Glenfield, North Shore, etc., it's quite hilly. Yep. You know, a lot of hills. So, like for example, if, if the storm water is right on the road and the road is here, and then you got you got the um, the property sloping all the way down. Well, if your storm water is here, well, you know, gravity dictates that water can't go up. Yeah, it has to go down. So yeah. Those sites will Extra have a costs m- major challenge. Yeah. Um, in developing. Yeah, yeah, and some sites just don't have stormwater connected. So, yeah. so you know, if if the storm was two hundred meters down the road, try to connect it, it's gonna cost you more than two hundred thousand. You know, so it all adds up the cost. Yeah, and I mean, I think there's a big focus. I know from the banks, there's a big focus on cash flow as well this year. Mm. Um, well, last couple of years, it's been getting more and more. You know, the focus has been on cash flow. Um, so it's like how do you deal i mean you know renovating creating extra income streams is one way of dealing with it um, paying down debt trying to you know protect the cash flow that you've got now yeah and using it wisely and not thinking that you're super wealthy with this cash flow that you have because we're in a really yeah. fortunate position with low interest rates right now but that you know potentially is not going to last yeah so you need to be savvy with that cash flow and mm. bank it yeah. reduce debt if you're not using it for other yeah. Um, capital expenditure, yeah. I yeah. think. Just, yeah, that's just, right. Just, you know, rainy day stuff. That's yeah. what I'm doing, definitely. Yeah. Especially in this market mm. where we don't know... It's what, uncertain. Yeah, we, we, we don't know where the economy is going as well, mm. you know. Mm. Um, if the economy, you know, let's just say Dow Jones collapse tomorrow, then obviously that could have a massive flow and effect to the banking sector. Mm. And the banking, like in 2008, they will kind of shut up shop. And that will affect the mortgage lending market and mm. obviously consequently affecting a people's ability to buy and then the whole market yeah. slows down and stuff like that. Yeah? I think I think that's um, I think our banking system's been a bit responsible in that kind of preempting that and yeah. you know, moving ahead of time, especially yeah. with that reserve bank and the big forty percent deposit requirement that's been running um, yeah. for a little while now. Yeah. Which has incidentally dropped now, right? Yeah. To thirty five percent from first of Jan. So it's Another thing I've noticed is it's a good time to take stock of your portfolio because sometimes you know last year you might have been you know you might have been told hey you know not possible or you're a bit short on deposit um, but you know this year even with that just a five percent increase mm. it can make a big you know big um, 
big difference if you're dealing with a couple of properties, you know. Um, might be just sure. enough to get you across the line to, for the next yep. one. Mm. Um, Coupled with some saving and working a bit harder and a few longer hours, put it all together, a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and it all mm. comes yeah. together. Um, and for investors who are kind of like stuck on cash flow, which um, I'm one of them as well. So for me, I left my engineering career, you know, become a probably wealth coach. Now I start uh, my own renovation business, sales trainer. You know, just uh, not just for the cat. Well, you know, that that's just to get more cash flow, so that I can um, yeah buy more properties as well. Mm. Yeah, and I've got my plans as well. Yeah. Um, a lot of my properties are bought quite early. You know, if I work on the purchase price, there you're returning twelve percent. You know, seven percent, whatever is fantastic. But if I work on the current value, actually, it's only it's, um. The twelve percent one is only actually was uh, returning three percent. Yeah. So for me, it's like, well, I, I should actually sell some of them up, and then move in the development and, side. Yeah. Or into higher from. yield. Yeah, or higher yield, mm. and, and uh, or increase your income streams, like you were saying. Yeah, maybe. and generally these days to to increase the, to get really high yielding properties, you know, development is the only way really. Infill development was the unit plan. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, or, or, or uh, certain areas out of all. Yeah, but, um, absolutely, different areas. Because you do a little bit out in South Taranaki, is that right, you mentioned? Yeah, just chasing the yield, so going to... What kind of towns? Um, um, South town? Taranaki, so I chose that because of the industry there with the frontier and the farming and, you know, there's plenty mm, of jobs. Oil and gas and stuff like that. That's yeah. right, yeah. oil and gas. Yeah. So not just, um, you know, some random mm. place. I chose it for a reason, Yeah. yeah. just chasing cash flow to help top up. You know other what what kind of, what kind of yield would you see down there if you're oh this today? was a while ago, oh, down there now uh, down there now oh probably about nine i think wow okay maybe it depends so yeah there's a lot of different yeah, yeah. a lot of different types of housing around yeah mm. um the so other you can supplement your yields that are maybe a bit lower say in suburbs in auckland with yeah. a couple of different things out of town in a good town mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, of course, some, sometimes I mean these days with the tougher lending requirements, it's harder to access capital. Um, but uh, thing to bear in mind if you've got a few of them is that you can sometimes actually sell one and 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 uh, you know try and discuss with the bank the possibility of getting some of the the cash out if you if your other properties have actually gone up a lot, you know. Uh, which I I did with a client the other day as well. That you know we couldn't we couldn't get them the same borrowing. Um, if they sold up, so they couldn't sell and then buy another house. Uh, but what we discovered is because the other properties are quite good value now, that they could sell one, and the bank was happy to let them keep the uh, most of the proceeds of the sale. So then they're able to go ahead and and maybe look for the higher yielding stuff, or mm. um, or look at you know creating a development, doing another income stream, or adding value to what you've already got, taking a good look at what you've already got, and thinking, well, yeah. what can I do with this? Right. Yeah, looking yeah. at it with a whole fresh set of eyes, mm. fencing off some outdoor areas, or adding some uh, new rooms by creating different spaces, or yeah. thinking outside the square, you know, actually looking at what you've got yeah. before you go chasing the next big thing. Yeah, and some investors are, they might be sitting on a full section sites, mm. they can actually add uh, quite a few dwellings on it. Mm. You know? Yeah, or just a garage. Or closing in some carports, or yeah, because what are your kind of the other thing we were going to touch on was just kind of your golden rules if you're looking for a property. Um, you guys have bought quite a few, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, if you, if you're an investor watching this and you're thinking, okay, I'm, I'm you know uh, looking at my next one. Any kind of rules if you're looking in Auckland, what you should kind of be looking at. Well, I don't think there's any shoulds because everyone's different and everyone has their own personal. Um, yeah. personal plan of what they're trying to achieve. Um, it's been a while since I've bought anything just because of the way the market's changed. But my golden rules to date have been just, my, and it's only my own personal view, but I like things that are in blocks. I don't like too many standalones because there's more maintenance. I like to have control of blocks yeah. so I know what's going on. And also one level, I just feel the population's getting older. So for me personally, and it's just my personal thing, is um, stairs and things aren't necessarily going to be conducive to an older population. Mm. Yeah, um, when you change point. your, you know, when you do exterior painting and stuff, you don't need the scaffolding. Yeah, yeah. so that's just my thing. Mm. Um, yeah, and a bit of outdoor area would be nice or, or flow, but um, yeah, definitely the, the one level thing for me. And, um, yeah, mm. Gary, you any any particular rules that you think? 
Um, I mean, Optimus. my goal is like my my rule is um, I really always prefer to buy in uh, decent areas. You know, I don't like to trace the yield and then end up in um uh, in areas where the tenant pool is, is you know um, <laughs> lower social economic and then you obviously have those tenant issues. Mm. You know, ultimately the properties are, are for long term and hold. Mm. So I don't want to have bloody property manager tell me, oh, it's been <laughs> trashed. Or I have you to need a good property about manager, Gary. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and uh, you know, I don't want your P and stuff like that. Mm. Um, so I prefer to buying um, decent suburbs, mm. working class suburbs, um, and also also the cash flow and the um, um, kind of capital gain as well. I, I like to have a good balance. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, because and obviously it depends if you're if you um, people who are investing today. Uh, it depends their cash flow. I mean, some people who have got you know, really good jobs, really high income, then they don't necessarily need to trace the cash flow. You know, it's okay to have a balance. Yes. Yep. You know, because ultimately that, you know, cash flow, if buying a good um, areas with good cash flow, but if the price doesn't move a lot, well, where's your next deposit going to come from? Correct. Yeah. That's so there's challenge. something in the middle too, isn't there? There's not either or. There can be those fringe suburbs that, mm. um, uh, a little bit um, lower socioeconomic, but they're going to improve soon because they're yeah, on that, I mean that circle. That would be the magic. That's, that's what that's I like. The, yeah, that's yeah. Like where you can magic. see that potential where it's going to get better soon. Put up with the rat eggs for a little bit, but it will get better. Well, to help oh. balance the portfolio. Yeah, yeah, mm. that's right. Um, also, yeah, okay, and plus, I mean, adding adding a uh, room or mm. doing a bit of tidy up, right, to push. Yeah. Um, yeah, basically, properties that need a bit of work to kind of add values to renovations mm. um, and you know adding bedrooms is a good way to increase income absolutely cash flow um, and, and sometimes just if it's a tired property you know just by refreshing it you can get the better rent absolutely right? mm. market oh, rent. Mm. Sorry. Um, yeah I find that the there's a lot of laundry space now which I don't think personally people need a big room just for to do their laundry so I quite often turn those into little study nooks or a nursery mm. oh, and yeah. combine the laundry now in, in, a, in a bathroom or in the kitchen. Yeah. yeah. Create another space. Yeah. People you, want the, you, the desk and the computer. And yeah. And if you can fit a single bed in there, you can call it a bedroom, right? <laughs> okay. E- easy, guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, uh, stretching it, yeah. thanks for listening, uh, guys. But uh, I mean, I, I just want to add one thing in terms of opportunities. I, I think there's a lot around the unitary plan. You know, it's good to get. Uh, what wise up on the unitary plan and I think there's a lot of subdividable properties out there this year as well that might be being sold um, being sold at uh, really re- reasonable prices what, what I'm seeing anyway yeah. so um, yeah well thanks Gary thanks um, Lisa thank um, you Hamish. thank you and uh, yeah thanks for watching thank you <coughs>